Good morning everyone, Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee and today we're going to consider how one of the most toxic elements on the earth's crust got into our drinking water. So don't go anywhere. Okay, just as a little intro, I have been thinking about my water here on my homestead. Considering my cistern water, which is designated for my garden and also my drinking water in my house. Because I'm not off-grid, I do drink the tap water which is filtered by Alexa Pure and Brita right now. And I'm considering what else I need to do to get my water to be better. Not only for drinking but for my garden. So in the process of doing that I had my water tested from my cistern because I got a bad smell in the summer. And if you saw my other video, I'll put the link up here about what they found. Uh, the video became viral. It's quite incredible. So be sure and watch those videos in that series. But today, I want to talk about the public utility water that I have and that other people have. Because I've heard from many people about the quality of their public water which is not good. <laughs> so the one chemical that has been quite controversial since the beginning was is fluoride in the public water system. So I just wanted to go through, there's quite a cast of characters in the history and I've been I did a deep dive into researching this uh, yesterday and today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish my source material into an article on my website at latebloomershow.com and I will let you know when that's up. Basically sodium fluoride is a compound found naturally in earth uh, and it's one of the most toxic substances on earth. It comes in the form of fluorine which is the gas, highly toxic, and fluorite which is the crystalline substance. Now, our story starts in 1901 with a dentist named McKay. After he graduated from dental school, he moved to Colorado Springs, and over the course of 30 years of working with his patients, he noticed that the people had brown-stained teeth, which they, at some point, started to call fluorosis because they determined that there was fluorine in the water in the naturally naturally occurring fluorine in the groundwater. Cut to 1931 in Bauxite, Arkansas, the Alcoa plant, uh, they were making cookware and, and so forth. Um, their chief chemist, it was becoming a PR disaster for them, uh, he, he tested the water because they had drilled three deep wells. The town grew so fast because of the production of this factory that they had to drill wells for public water and they evidently hit these natural pockets of fluorine so people started getting brown teeth so they started they said okay we can't let the people associate brown teeth with our cookware they're going to think they're going to get cancer whatever and so uh, they had to study this and determine that there was 15 parts per million now you're going to hear more later about what is a healthy what they determined was the healthy amount. Meanwhile, there's a St. Louis dentist named Dean who became very powerful and he was determined to have um, uh, to have optimum fluoridation. And so he started a study in 1945. They determined that in Lake Michigan there was no fluorine. And so they would study Grand Rapids and Muskegon in a 15-year study so they could have health and safety trials and long-term health studies. So that was proceeding along, but there was another dentist named Frisch in Madison, Wisconsin, who said, I don't want to wait 15 years. Our people could be having less cavities now. <laughs> and... Um, so he killed that study. He was instrumental in killing that study after five years. Uh, he started politicking in 47 and uh, 
he invoked the word naturalness because at the time we knew sodium fluoride to be what they made rat poison out of. And so we turned something from poison into something good. That, that takes quite a lot of public relations. Uh, 50 communities had, uh, and because of his efforts to nix this five-year study, well, what became the five-year study, it was a 15-year study, in 19, by 1950, 50 communities had, had jumped to fluoridation. And all the concerns were just brushed aside. The health concerns were just brushed aside every time. Um, but Frisch uh, became, uh, he, wanted, he wanted the whole world fluoridated. Um, and he became concerned with the injection equipment and also adequate supplies of sodium fluoride. Uh, because this has to be extracted from the earth. Um, so he wrote to Alcoa and said the demand will soon be astronomical proportions. And the trade journal in 51 said, quote, has fluoride chemical makers goggle-eyed. So we turned this toxic waste into a public health miracle. Um, somehow along the way that Dean determined that one part per million was the perfect amount that every community should have. In a 1975 study, 5 to 10 percent increase in total cancer rates with fluoridation uh, was, was determined and hearings were called and Congress called hearings and the government revealed they had never tested fluoridation for cancer. So Congress ordered studies, 12 years go by of studies, and they had equivocal evidence of bone cancer in rats and bone and joint cancer in all ages, especially youth. Uh, no such rise in unfluoridated counties. But the government threw out their findings. Uh, in their published report, they did not include those findings. In 1992, the Journal of American Medical Association concluded it was appropriate to revisit the issue of water fluoridation. Uh, meanwhile, in New Zealand, the chairman of Fluoridation Promotion Committee, who was, it was in his best interest to have this go his way, uh, found that uh, the percentage of children without fluoridation had less cavities than with fluoridation. But the NHS, the National Health Service, refused to publish that information and fired him, kicked him out. <laughs> Our cast of characters so far has McKay, the dentist, uh, the Alcoa chemist Churchill, and the St. Louis dentist Dean, who became a, a powerful figure, um, and Frisch, the Madison dentist, who, who scrapped the... Uh, who destroyed the 15-year study. This brings us up to the 1950s. In the 1950s, there were 93 cities that, that had fluoridation. And one, one article said, is this a commie plot or a capitalist ploy? So they knew that it was, um, it was a very big deal. You know, you have all these chemical companies. Alcoa is an aluminum company. But you have all these companies have all these byproducts and wastes. Alcoa's chief counsel, and, and in 1946 he was making an astounding $750,000 a year. Now, by today's standards, that's $7.5 million a year. Something like that. Um, so they sent him to Washington, and within one year, Truman had appointed him to the head of the FSA, Federal Security Agency, under which the Public Health Service lived under that umbrella. And he was a big advocate of socialized medicine, and he mobilized the respectable left and the establishment center. And uh, soon they had all of the they had all of the organizations of dentists and physicians on board with fluoridation. Ewing, lawyer, brought in Edward L. Bernays, who was probably the the most influential public relations man who ever lived. He was the nephew of Sigmund Freud, if you know who he was. 
and he was called on the occasion of his 100th birthday in 1991 the original spin doctor so he could make anybody believe anything and the ways in which he would do that would he he said quote those who manipulate the unseen mechanism of society those who manipulate what we don't see in society constitutes the invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country so I don't know if that rings a bell, but we've had a lot of we've heard a lot about that sort of thing in the last uh, three years, six years. Um, so he brings in Bernays. Bernays is the one who convinced women to start smoking cigarettes. He was the one who convinced pregnant women to start smoking cigarettes. And he was the one who convinced the American public that fluoridation was good for you, that it was going to save your, you from getting cavities. Now the conclusion here is that the chief benefit of fluoridation, from what I could gather, is from five to nine years old, when you're getting your permanent teeth. Because baby teeth, they come and go, right? So you want your permanent teeth to start out without cavities. So. There, there seems to be some benefit to having sodium fluoride. Um, but now I want you to recognize that sodium fluoride in toothpaste is not what they put in the public water supply. They haven't for a very long, very long time. The majority of what is put into the public water supply is called FSA. I'm going to talk about that in a second. The chief benefit seems to be from five to nine years old, but meanwhile, you are subjecting an entire population of people to this toxic chemical. So, like, like I said, it's mass medication without informed consent. Okay, 70% of the U.S., 185 million people are fluoridated. Um, by their drinking water, which represents over half of the world population that is fluoridated. So the U.S. has over half of the people fluoridated in the whole world. It's only a handful of countries that fluoridate. Ninety-seven percent of Europe rejected it. And more and more communities are pulling out all the time. Uh, and still we have no long-term studies by the government um, to determine the health impacts of fluoridating populations. And don't forget the taxpayer pays for all of this because all of these chemicals, and in, in, in my case, they're, um, they put sulfuric acid, caustic, um, that controls the pH. They use the disinfectant, which is a form of chlorine, chloramine, one or the other. Um, I think they use about five chemicals to treat the water, but in where I live, they're not treating sewage water and turning that back into public water, which is, is the case in many places. So you really need to call and find out what is being put in your water supply. Every water department should have a website and you can go on there and look at the water quality report. If you still have questions, there should be a phone number where you can call. I just wanted to point out that naturally occurring fluorine, which is what caused too much of it, caused the browning of the teeth in Colorado Springs, bauxite and other places, that is actually calcium fluoride. Now we all know calcium supposed to be good for our bones and teeth and everything, right? That's calcium fluoride. But sodium fluoride is a different animal. What the chemists and the dentists said is they dismissed it by saying fluoride is fluoride. But it's not. Okay, let me go back to the um, FSA. So, Florida is probably one of the, certainly in our country, the leader in phosphate production, which makes fertilizer. And so their byproduct, their waste byproduct, was going out the tubes of these smokestacks 
like crazy and in the 60s the ranchers and farmers started complaining about it and they were forced to put scrubbers on the top of these smokestacks. They turned these two toxic vapors into a liquid called FSA, fluorosilicic acid. So it has fluoride in it <laughs> And it's very, very toxic. If it gets on your skin, it'll burn you or kill you. If you breathe it, it'll, it'll uh, damage your lungs or kill you. And so <laughs> they have to put it in these really high-density tanks. And from these tanks of this toxic liquid, that has been shipped all over the country for 50 years and dripped into the water reservoirs all over the country. I don't know what they do in other countries, but that's what they do here. That's the majority of the fluoride that goes into the water is FSA, not sodium fluoride. I just want to point out the sodium fluoride in toothpaste is pharmaceutical grade, uh, as well as pills. I mean, they put pharmaceutical grade sodium fluoride in in a million prescriptions you know um, so they they use it sodium fluoride in different ways but they knew they would never have enough to furnish sodium fluoride for the whole population so that's when they said hey we can accomplish we can take all this waste byproduct out of Florida and ship it all over the country and they get rid of their waste they, they increase their, their public profile because they're not spewing this stuff in the sky anymore, but basically it's going into the public water and it's being drunk and going out into the waste stream. Uh, in 2011, they changed that from one parts per million to 0.07 parts per million. But from 1970s onward, this FSA waste byproduct has been dripping into the nation's water supply. What you can do, like I said, you can look up your water supply on, your we on, on the company website. You can uh, run for city council, befriend a city councilman or woman, and try to get, try to get fluoridation out of your county. Um, if you if you feel strongly about this, um, I mean it's not fair. It's simply not fair to medicate a whole population if if the only possible benefit is from five to nine years old. And why drink it into your body when you can solve the same thing by just rinsing something in your mouth? So this is how it all happened, public relations and public relations <laughs> and public relations. What started out really as something good, you know, they wanted to know what was causing the brown teeth, which they finally dubbed fluorosis. They discovered that there was some benefit to the fluorine in the water uh, to to help with the cavities, but then it turned in the, into this whole other thing, you know. And so you have to say, okay, what am I going to do about it? All right, if you're not going to go down and and try to change things in your county, then you there's only a couple of ways that are convenient for a home user to get it out of your drinking water, and that is with distilling and many people already distill their water. That takes all the minerals out, the natural min minerals and the uh, fluoride that they put in, FSA that they put in, or reverse osmosis. That's, those are the only two that I can find. There are a couple of other ways, but they would be very difficult for you know, the homeowner, the regular home user to, to get out of the water. So, um, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> I think I covered everything. Um, 
reverse osmosis is not cheap. That requires a whole big setup under your sink and everything. I am considering it. Um, but they say that don't use reverse osmosis to take out you know, all the stuff out of your, uh, all the bad stuff out of your water, especially if you have really bad water. Um, you need a pre-filter that you can change uh, before uh, it hits the reverse osmosis uh, because you don't want to be changing those filters all the time. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, I hope my journey here of discovery is uh, enlightening, inspiring, or educational in some way to you. And I hope you want to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And the water saga continues.